What's up, you guys? I want to show you this cool looking integral from River Hill High School. Uh, it's a high school integration bee. And they s I saw a post on AOPS and I just want to show you, I just want to share this cool looking integral here. Okay? So, this is one of the finals round integrals from their high school integration bee. And I'm going to show you two methods, two ways. The first way is the way I did it is I want to get rid of this square root, right? But then I realized, wait a minute, x equals square root of 2. Instead of using sine theta, I want to use cosine theta. And the reason is because this is going to become 2 cosine square theta minus 1, and I'm going to get cosine 2 theta. And I want to do that. And so I was like, ooh, that actually seems very nice. And the derivative is going to cancel out with this. So what we end up having is... But the, the derivative is going to be negative, right? We have 1 pi over 4. We have root 2, which gives us 0. But we could use the negative to flip our bounds, right? So what we actually have is 0 pi over 4 inverse sine of cosine of 2 theta. Okay? I'm going to let u equal 2 theta just to be lazy. So now we have a half of 0 pi over 2. And we have one of these integrals. Now, the safest thing to do, if you don't know your trig identities, your unusual awkward trig identities for this, the safest thing to do is to do integration by parts. Now, I know that sounds very tiring, but trust me, it saves you less trouble with this controversial integral. Because with these these controversial integrals are not my favorite because you have to be careful with the the domain and all that nasty stuff. Right? It's it's horrible. So to deal with controversial integrals like these where you have an inverse trig and then a trig function inside, just do just do integration by parts. It is so it just saves you less trouble. And you don't have you don't you you it just makes less mistakes. Okay, so please, if you don't know your trig identities, just do integration by parts on this. It saves you a lot faster. Okay. Um, the only thing you do have to be careful about is the absolute value when you integrate by parts and then you like square root something. Absolute value, absolute value. Okay, not not just canceling it out. Okay, so be very careful. But here I know my I know my trig identity, so I'm gonna be lazy. This here between zero and pi over two is equal to pi over two minus x. This is only true between zero and pi over two. Well, that's as much as I know. I don't know about the other bounds. If if I don't know if I had some other bounds, I just do integration by parts. But here I'm lazy, so here I got a half of pi square over four minus this is x squared over 2. This is like what, pi squared over 8? Oh, pi squared over 8. Yeah. And so I end up with pi squared over 16, in which I do have it checked up. Uh, if I, yes, pi squared over 16. Okay. So there you go. That's the correct answer. All right. So it's pi squared over 16. So square root of 2 cosine theta, it was a lot nicer. Okay, now let me show you the fastest way. This one blew my mind. I would have never uh, thought of this for some reason. All right, now for the second method, I would have never thought of this. So here's the fastest way. Okay, let u equal inverse sine of x squared minus one. Now you're probably thinking. Now I I thought about this too. Like, what the hell are you doing? Right? What? What? Like, how? how is this going to be applied, right? Watch this, okay? I would have never seen this coming. So, here, we have 2x square root of 1 minus x squared minus 1 squared, right? And you're, yeah, you're probably thinking, what the hell are we gonna do with this, right? Watch very carefully, okay? I'm gonna simplify this. This, this is 1 minus x4 minus 2x squared plus 1, right? So what we have here is 2x squared minus x to the power of 4. Oh, 
And you can see with these x squares that we can factor out, this is square root of 2 minus x squared. When you simplify it, it actually does equal to this, which is what we have. So, in general, we actually can integrate this with this u substitution, square root of 2, 2 minus 1 is pi over 2, right? And we get u. Ah, uh, would you look at that? Isn't that crazy? And so now you have u squared over 4 from 0 to pi over 2, and this gives you the answer immediately, pi squared over 16. That's the fastest method, but I would have never seen this. I would have never thought the derivative of this is this. I would I would see it as like a quartic polynomial at the bottom, but I was wrong. It's actually when you simplify it, it's it's still this. Okay? So very crazy. Very, very crazy. So yeah, just want to share you guys with that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.